Hi there, I'm Kendall with the Obesity Action Coalition and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. I'm here with Courtney Henderson, the Professional Education Manager for the Lipedema Foundation to speak about the chronic disease of lipedema. Courtney is passionate about serving the lipedema community through advancing advocacy and creating better awareness surrounding the disease. Welcome Courtney, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you. So let's dive right in. First, Courtney, what is lipedema? Yeah, so lipedema is a chronic medical condition that occurs almost exclusively in women. It was first described in 1940 by Allen and Hines. It's characterized by a symmetric buildup of adipose tissue that primarily affects the lower body and sometimes arms with the feet and hands typically spared. Now, how is lipedema different from obesity? Yeah, so this is a great question because lipedema is often misdiagnosed as obesity. So there are some key differences. So presentation, when obesity related fat accumulates through the body, it may not discriminate towards certain areas. In contrast, lipedema related fat can accumulate in a combination of the hips, buttocks, thighs, lower legs, and sometimes arms, but it typically spares the hands and feet. So in terms of affecting the abdomen, some research clinicians and patients have reported nodular structures in the abdomen. In fact, in the Lipedema Foundation Registry First Look Report, 23% of respondents did identify nodular texture in their abdomen. So whether or not lipedema impacts that area is still a point of controversy among clinicians. So lipedema, the lower body may appear disproportionate to the upper body. It's also important to note that lipedema may distribute throughout the body in different presentations or types. And one of these types affects only the buttocks and hips. So if a clinician is only looking at the legs, they might miss that type of lipedema. So while we commonly think of lipedema as occurring only in the legs or arms, it's important to complete a full body assessment. Next, obesity related fat may typically respond to a combination of healthy eating and exercise. While lipedema related fat is usually resistant to those measures. Um, some research suggests that people with early stage lipedema may experience lower rates of metabolic conditions such as diabetes, high cholesterol, or high blood pressure, while those comorbidities commonly occur with obesity. And we do need more research in that area. Lipedema fat also presents with painful nodules that can feel like walnuts, rice, or peas underneath the skin, while obesity-related fat typically is a smoother texture. So again, completing a thorough physical exam is important. Lipedema tissue sometimes has a tendency to bruise easily compared to normal fat tissue, and lipedema may coincide with venous insufficiency. Finally, research has shown us that obesity-related fat and lipedema-related fat differ histologically. So two notable examples among others, there's recent evidence from the Krasinski lab at Vanderbilt that showed through MRI imaging significantly higher tissue sodium levels and adipose deposition in the lower extremities of lipedema patients compared to BMI matched controls. In addition, there's a recent paper from Krupa and colleagues published in the Frontiers and Immunology Journal, which is a high impact journal that revealed lipedema subcutaneous adipose tissue is associated with stage dependent adipocyte hypertrophy, stage progressive interstitial fibrosis, an elevated proportion of M2-like macrophages. So the character of the inflammatory response here differs from primary obesity and may possess an essential role in the development of lipedema. 
Um, it's also important to highlight here that it's possible for patients to have lipolymphedema. So for patients who have lymphedema as a comorbidity, the feet and hands could present with edema. Okay, thank you, Courtney, for all of that information. Um, I really appreciate you distinguishing between uh, lipedema and obesity. Now, is there a treatment for lipedema? So there's no cure for lipedema, and there's currently um, not good research data to back most treatments. So some treatments are currently being utilized in the community such as conservative measures like manual lymphatic drainage and wear of specialized compression garments. So some patients may also undergo liposuction to remove lipedema tissue, but it's important to note that research in that area is still evolving and every surgeon has a different protocol. So individual results may vary and patients should do their own research prior to electing to undergo surgery. We have more information regarding treatments on our website, which is lipedema.org under the tab treating lipedema. Our hope is with better recognition and diagnosis of the condition that we'll see more research evolve with treatment techniques. Great, thank you. And we will link to the website in our description as well. Now, what should a person do if they suspect they have lipedema? Yeah, so there are two things I would suggest to get started. So if you visit lipedema.org slash guide, you're gonna be directed to the Lipedema Foundation's Patient Self-Advocacy Guide. So it's a navigational tool created to help lipedema patients in the U.S. no matter where they are in their journey. So it offers basic knowledge on lipedema, highlights differences between obesity and lymphedema, and offers tips for how to find and engage healthcare providers. So specifically, we recommend a working backwards method where patients would seek out a certified lymphedema therapist and then ask them if they know a local physician who could help with the lipedema diagnosis. So the guide highlights several websites for helping patients find a lymphedema therapist near them. So second, I would connect with others who will serve as a support system. So one group that patients have found particularly helpful is the Lipedema Sisters USA group on Facebook. And another great organization is the Fat Disorders Resource Society, and their website is fatdisorders.org. And they also have a lot of helpful videos for patients um, through their YouTube channel. I think it's just really important to, um, for patients to understand that they don't have to go through this condition feeling alone or invalidated. Absolutely. Thank you, Courtney. Um, I know you shared several resources there, but are there any other resources that are available for patients and doctors? Yeah, absolutely. So lipedema.org, it's a great place to start to collect information, review research, and get access to the resources that are available. So patients and clinicians can find our patient self-advocacy guide, which we talked about, a lipedema brochure, which includes what to look for in diagnosing lipedema. We have an infographic containing information on presentation, common symptoms, prevalence, diagnosis challenges, common misdiagnoses, and treatment. Those guides can be downloaded from our website under the resources drop down menu at the top of our page. Patients and clinicians can also sign up for our mailing list for the most up-to-date news surrounding lipedema, and they can order brochures under our contact page. So a few other things I wanted to highlight from the website. We have an entire photo library showcasing lipedema presentation. That's under our photo stories page. We have an entire research library called Legato Lipedema Library, which can be accessed under the resources menu. So the Legato Library is a comprehensive and up-to-date archive 
of research publications specifically related to lipedema, and it's an excellent resource for anyone who wants to come up to speed on the research surrounding lipedema. We also offer a lipedema-specific registry, which is designed to better understand the needs of the lipedema community, identify research topics, and share information with other researchers and partner organizations. So it's important to note that the research or the registry is available for anyone to sign up, not only who has been diagnosed with lipedema or suspects that they have lipedema, but also for those who don't have lipedema to be used as a control group. We also offer a tool called Lipedema Foundation Legwork, which allows for searching and finding clinical trials. That's available under our resources menu. Anyone wanting to take a look at um, recent research projects can access those under our funded projects menu on the website. And finally, we also provide a blog on our site to stay up to date on the latest lipedema news. So lots of, lots of great tools there. Definitely so many great tools, Courtney. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Yes, absolutely. And thank you to everyone who tuned in. Now we'd like to take a moment to extend our gratitude to all of our donors out there. It's your support that makes this program possible and free for everyone to join. If you'd like to be a part of this meaningful cause and support our efforts, please make a donation today. Together, we can make a lasting impact and create a more informed and empowered community. Bye now.